Now, I personally think that it's a great idea by the government to send illegal migrants to Rwanda to be processed. You know the ones I'm talking about, the ones who float over illegally over the uh, English Channel on their little dinghies. Now, they're either caught by the, um, the border taxi service or they make it to our shores undetected and then flee into the English countryside and are never seen again. Now, this presents many problems here in the UK. For instance, by coming here illegally, they are taking the place of people who have saved up for years, professionals, people who contribute to British society and pay their way. Illegal immigration is robbing us of these people. And of course, there's the danger of terrorism. Now, if you remember during ISIS heyday, they did indeed put a statement out there saying that they were going to hide terrorists in amongst the illegal migrants coming over here in dinghies. Of course, it goes without saying that the Manchester bomber was one of these people. Opening a floodgate of mass unchecked immigration puts immense pressure on public services, transport, schooling, the NHS, etc. So naturally, it's a good idea. I think it's a fantastic champion idea to send these people to Rwanda in the middle of Africa so they can get processed. And anyway, Rwanda is a safe country, isn't it? you got the frothy mouth, left-wing, bedwetting, nappy-wearing lefties barking on about the fact that the Syrians and the Afghan refugees are all fleeing war-torn countries and they need to be in a safe place. Well, Rwanda's a safe place, so why not? There is literally no argument against this which is valid. Now, of course, the lefties are up in arms on this and Twitter, as you can imagine, is leading the forefront of shitty feelings-based arguments against this by saying Boris Johnson, the Tories, uh, Britain is racist for doing this. We wouldn't do it to Ukrainian refugees, etc. Well, no, of course not, because the Ukrainian culture doesn't have a history of hatred towards the West. And there's loads of funny comments on Twitter <laughs> regarding this. And the funniest I've seen is by a verified journalist, a blue tick Twitter twat. And he said, don't know why, but today I found myself thinking of Nazi Germany's plan to resettle the Jews of Europe to Madagascar. Now, this complete and utter spaff shake is comparing uh, refugees or so-called refugees from Syria and Afghanistan to the Jewish community in 1930s Nazi Germany. Of course, Hitler did have such a plan, but then he jacked that in and went for mass murder instead. Obviously, this isn't what's happening here. <laughs> By God. The British government doesn't have a backup plan of mass murder towards the Syrian and Afghan so-called refugees. They are being sent to another country to be processed, to sort out the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. And if you see the accommodation they've been given by the Rwandan government as part of this deal, then these people are going to be living in relative luxury. Far better luxury than the British homeless, especially uh, British um, homeless veterans who are currently living on the streets after serving their country and being ignored by the woke establishment. And all this is going to be paid for by the British taxpayer. But you would think, according to this idiot on Twitter and the rest like him, that these Syrian and Afghan refugees are going to be put into um, mud huts or some sort of desolate, dingy prison cell, which they won't be. It's utterly ridiculous and one of the very few good ideas that has come from Boris Johnson's government lately, in fact, ever. Now, as a proud British person, I don't mind immigration. You come over here, obey the law, integrate, pay your way, pay your dues, or keep to yourself. Don't become a problem then I'm all for you coming here. If you are a genuine refugee who is fleeing a war-torn country or you're being persecuted and you bring your whole family with you, not just leaving them behind, but bring them with you and you've got nothing and no one else to help you with, then fine, you know, I'm all up for that. We'll help you. But at the end of the day, I'm a British person. This is my country. I've served it proudly and I want the UK to be safe. I would rather the government took extreme steps and made it very difficult for people to try and come over here illegally and keep this island of ours, this great British island of ours, completely safe. 
And yes, folks, Britain is great. She is Great Britain. Despite the fact that there are woke organisations just running uh, establishments into the ground. But it won't last forever, folks. Because this island is full of great, friendly, welcoming, patriotic people who also want to keep this island safe. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not racist. It's not xenophobic. It's just plain old common sense. Something that's completely lacking in Twitter and the left in general nowadays. And that's what I think. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Are you for immigration? Are you against immigration? Are you for immigration but against illegal immigration? Whatever your view is, please let me know in the comments. Because I love interacting with you guys. And also, if you'd like to support my channel, if you like what I do, if I make you laugh, if you agree with my views and uh, you wish to support my channel because I've been demonetized by YouTube, which is great, because that means I'm upsetting people, <laughs> um, by all means, you can buy me a beer. The link is down below. And that's that. So comment, share, subscribe. And until my next video, Roger Trout.